Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope it's not too late to wish you Eid Mubarak to everyone who's celebrating. I was in Malaysia for a month starting the 9th of April. So this video will be a compilation of what happened, how we celebrated Eid in Malaysia. I'm starting off a day before I go home, which was my husband's birthday. We celebrated by having a big meal at Tony Roma's. The food was great. And on the next day, my husband sent me off to the airport. Although I was in Malaysia for a month, my husband was only home for two weeks due to his work commitment. So he was actually traveling back to Malaysia a week after I did. If you are not familiar with the metro system in Dubai, you could go to the airport by metro. It will clearly state Airport Terminal 1. We use gold card to get into the gold class cabin because it has better space for your luggage and it is usually less crowded. Once you arrive at the station you could get into the elevator and once you go down you will see the departure sign you need to tap out your card as usual what you do is you can just follow the sign it will bring you right to the departure area it is very convenient and cheap way of avoiding the traffic and avoiding the hefty taxi fee and once you go out you could check your flight check-in schedule especially if you have baggage we were there during ramadan so we were looking for the food court to have our iftar you have to go up one level The flight that I booked was Saudia, so I had to transit in Jeddah. This was the food served during the flight. There is like a coffee type of pudding dessert and I got the chicken biryani. On to the next flight, I got the whole row to myself. They also provided you with blanket and a small pillow and socks, eye shade, earplugs and also toothbrush. This is the meal that they serve for Sahur. There were announcements made for when it was Imsa. In certain Saudi airplane, there are no physical shade at the windows, so you have to press this button. Finally, I could see the rainforest, all the greeneries in Malaysia and once I landed in Kuala Lumpur, I had to take another domestic plane to reach my home state.
after I've claimed my baggage, I got onto the KLIA Transit ERL, which is another train service that brings you from KLIA 1 to KLIA 2. The fee was only touring it. It is very accessible from the airport terminal. And then I had to check in my bag again and proceed to board another plane. Air Asia flights usually don't provide complimentary meal because it's not a full service flight. So I ordered basil chicken with rice for iftar. This was the day when my husband finally arrived in Malaysia. We were at his parents' house. They have a very big front yard and backyard. It's located in the middle of the paddy field. It is very scenic and has such a chill countryside vibe. We went on a motorcycle ride right before Iftar. This was a day before Eid. My in-laws were prepping the food for the next morning for the Eid celebration and here's my father-in-law cooking the chicken rendang which is one of the dishes that people typically serve for Eid or Hari Raya as we call it in Malaysia. Here are some ketupat. On the Eid Mubarak day itself, we had a photo session in the morning before the guests come and visit. My husband and I decided to celebrate the first day of Eid at his parents' house. The Malaysian tradition of celebrating Eid is to start with shaking and kissing the hand of the elders in the morning of Eid while asking for forgiveness for all the wrongdoings that you did the year prior. About half an hour later, our first guests arrived. They got to enjoy all the food that we prepared. There were a lot of relatives on my husband's side within the vicinity, so the house filled up quite quickly. I never cared much for the traffic in Midtown. So I moved down south, I don't know where you are now. Getting exhausted, trying to imagine Settling down when it's already happened A piece of my heart is stuck in Manhattan The last four years were all I've known I guess I forgot how to be on my own I'm going out of my mind on the second day of Eid, we celebrated at my parents' house. We had barbecue for our closest family members, mainly my cousins and uncles. We had an assortment of food to enjoy. My mom invited my in-laws over as well to celebrate with us. And of course, as our usual tradition, we would have karaoke for those who feel like singing. Some 
some were enjoying food and some were singing. Here are my nieces. My in-laws and my cousins. More food are slowly brought out for everyone to enjoy. And here is our photo op. As you can see, the theme for the day was leopard print so everyone dressed up in leopard print shirts and dresses and of course after eating a lot of food I had to burn the calorie by singing karaoke A couple of days later, we went out to meet some of our friends. It's so good to finally catch up with one another. We've known them for years. I have personally known them since I was 13. Puts on the show, puts under the subtle smile. We'll never know. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. There must be something that features. You'll find the beauty. If you are not from Malaysia, this is Kropot Leko, which is usually eaten with the sauce. The next day after going to a couple of open houses, my husband and I went on a little date to the Pantai Irama. We had some snacks to enjoy by the beach. There were a few transformers walking around entertaining kids at the beach and of course I had to get the ice cream The kind that is served on top of hot dog buns. This is what it looks like. As you could tell by my reaction, it was so good. On the next day, my in-laws decided to host another open house for those who didn't make it on the first day. So my mother-in-law made Kway Teow Kamboja, which is a type of noodle dish. Let me paint a picture, I see they don't understand. Feeling like Picasso, she brushed in again. She also made Lontong Kwa Lode. Mm. 
to get my cash back you be looking fine so no wonder they can match that louis v scarf on it comes with sambal and also nasi impit for those who didn't like kuah lode, they could have the nasi impit with kuah kacang. She also made this curry which is to be eaten with the naan bread. And this is my husband catching me stealing one of the snacks and desserts served at the table. Everyone's standing up to see her. There must be something that features you find the beauty I found somebody I say you don't cross my mind and we're back at my parents house and my auntie treated us to durian with sticky rice this is called pulut durian which is usually eaten with this coconut milk that has been cooked with some salt i believe to make it more creamy but sometimes i do because sometimes i drive this is how we eat it you could top it off with a little bit of sugar if you like it to be sweeter and on the same day we went to meet one of our friends from school as well who happened to live nearby my parents house we had maggi chilop which is essentially noodle soup topped with some beef slices and mine also had the soft boiled egg i guess the truth is i can't leave memories behind when she asked about you i hesitate every time I don't always think about you, but sometimes I do. One of the days that I was home, I went to visit my late father's grave, which is something that I do every time I go home. I don't always think about you till first avenue that's when I do and after that I went to the fish market with my uncle to stock up on some supplies for the kitchen Sometimes I do Cause sometimes I drive through All of the streets we used to On First Avenue Cause sometimes I don't even know where I'm going at first All of the turns that I had to and on one of those days that I was home, my uncle and I had the opportunity to attend the wedding of one of our family friends. We've known the family since forever. I found somebody, I say you don't cross my mind. It was such a beautiful wedding. They were actually our neighbors. When I was little, we lived in a rental home that is at the back of their house. So I grew up playing in their yards. The food was so good. Sometimes I do, cause sometimes I drive all of the streets we used to on first avenue 
They also had great coconut milk ice cream. They also had Yong Tao Fu Station, which is quite a treat. And these are the door gifts that we got at the wedding. On to the last day of my stay in Kelantan, I had to go and get the roti canai because I like it with sweetened condensed milk. So we got those. We also went to one of a very famous store at my hometown, which is Teobing Sama. They had different type of rice, which is something that we Klantanis eat in the morning. And there were a lot of snacks and desserts or kueh mue that you could get as well. Nasi ayam chobe is their specialty as well as the nasi gulai kuning. I also got nasi lemak for myself. This is what we call apam bako. These are just the roti canai that I got. This is kenom pak mo. It's from Thailand. These are some pulut baka, pulut baka with sambal surrounding and also I think these are pulut pagi. We also got some lompat tikam, some kuih topi and also cek mek molek. This is how we eat nasi lemak. You would start by deconstructing the rice and break it down into pieces. Get a little bit of each things and put it together for each bite. After a few hours, my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law came to fetch me. We were on our way to the airport. This is what our local airport looks like. It's quite small.
Finally, I was ready to board the plane to Kuala Lumpur. The last few days that I was in Malaysia, I planned to go on a trip with my friends. Once I arrived in Kuala Lumpur, I will be meeting them to go to Langkawi Island together and I will share that trip in a separate video. I hope you enjoy the roundup of my stay in Malaysia, specifically in my hometown Kelantan. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye! Pillow talks are symphony when I've been on so good.